it's an honor to, to follow Mayor Hartwell uh, sure. for a couple of reasons. One, because he and, and his city have, have done so much to actually uh, put things in action. And the second is because I'm not the first person to use PowerPoint this morning. So um, I wanted to, to uh, tell you a little bit about the, the University of Michigan Energy Institute. Um, you've heard about our sister Herb Institute and the, the uh, Ross School of Business and the School of Natural Resources and the Environment, and those are very important partners <coughs> in the work that, that we're trying to do here at the university. Uh, I also want to spend most of my time on the University of Michigan Energy Survey, which is something that we have launched uh, within the past few months. We have some initial results that I think are very germane to the topic of discussion today, and I want to share those with you. And finally, the picture at the bottom is the home of the Energy Institute. Uh, it's uh, the Phoenix Memorial Laboratory on the north campus of the University of Michigan. The university has provided us with a wonderful new uh, LEED Gold certified building uh, that I think really uh, sets an example for the kinds of, of uh, sustainability and efficiency efforts that we have and want to have on the campus. So, uh, the, the, as Andy said, the University of Michigan Energy Institute <coughs> really hopes to integrate science, technology, and policy solutions to the world's pressing energy problems. We have a wonderful foundation here in Michigan uh, with strong legacies in automotive and, and manufacturing and, and other areas, and we certainly are building on those. Uh, we are, see ourselves as an important pillar in the university's efforts uh, to be a more sustainable institution and to uh, build this society-wide. And uh, oops. I describe the Institute as the front door to all things energy at the university. And a door has two sides. And on the inside, we do a lot of work trying to pull together multidisciplinary teams to work on big projects. Uh, but we're also the uh, point of contact both for people coming to the university looking for resources and expertise and partnerships, and we partner with some of the organizations in this room and, and sponsors of this conference, as well as the uh, portal through which we hope to launch uh, our discoveries and, and uh, our innovations to the rest of the world. Um, okay, let's try this. Oh, that one's not working either. Okay. Uh, we have more than 140 faculty who are involved in the Institute, and I just point out our website at the bottom because we have arranged that so that it's searchable for experts in about 20 different categories. So if you're looking for uh, expertise at the University of Michigan, you're sure to find it uh, if you <coughs> search long enough. Well, we're hoping to make the search shorter and hope that as, as you uh, need experts, you will, will easily find them through our portal. again. Um, finally, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about how we organize our efforts. You see there on the right-hand side uh, some of the, the major topics that we're working on, including carbon-free energy sources, energy storage and utilization, transportation systems and fuels, and policy economics and societal impact. And you may think uh, efficiency and productivity uh, the key words for today are missing from that list, and they aren't there explicitly, but they run through everything we do, uh, including efforts in, uh, in things like uh, thermoelectrics for uh, capturing of waste heat and then c converting that to electrical energy, uh, to efforts especially in energy storage, both for grid-level storage that will make integration of more renewables uh, more feasible, <laughs> as well as for uh, storage of, and batteries in automotive applications for uh, hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles. We're investing about $10 million in a new battery facility, uh, as well as uh, things like smart grid and, and smart uh, appliance activities. And the transportation systems and fuels uh, ranges from things like more efficient internal combustion engines to on the, the system side collaboration with our transportation research institute uh, in things like the mobility transformation center looking at uh, connected and automated vehicles which have potentially huge 
implications for our energy uses for transportation. And then policy, uh, economics, and societal impact, including sponsoring uh, activities so, like a new project looking at Michigan's renewable portfolio standard uh, when the, the topic comes up uh, again, uh, as well as uh, collaborating with other institutes on projects like hydraulic fracturing in Michigan. So hopefully that, that, that's, the, that's the end of the ad. Uh, I didn't have a video this morning. Uh, and I wanted to go on to talk about the, the Michigan Energy Survey. So this is a joint project between the Energy Institute and the Institute for Social Research on campus. Uh, the ISR is world renowned for a variety of surveys. One of their, their flagship enterprises is the Survey of Consumer Attitudes, which is run monthly and becomes one of the leading economic indicators that uh, is used by the federal government. We've been partnering with them to do a quarterly energy survey uh, that will be a rider on, or that is a rider on the survey of consumer attitudes, but with a similar concept, uh, we're trying to ask questions that will help us develop longitudinal data over a period of time to understand consumer attitudes uh, about energy, and that I think, uh, and I'll show you some of the initial results, uh, can help us uh, guide the approaches to the public, to policymakers, and and others. So, um, oh, sorry, I had more time than that. Um, so let me say, people, our, our focus group efforts have said that people don't know much uh, about energy, uh, but they can talk about their personal experiences. And so we really crafted this to try to meet them where they, they live. Uh, one of the, the things that came out of our focus group work was uh, the major uh, interest in reliability, affordability, and impact of energy on the environment. Uh, and I think one of the, the most first important points is that the public expressed about twice as much concern about affordability and environmental issues as about reliability. They actually are, are fairly confident in the, uh, the reliability of the energy supply. Um, there, there's some, we're able to parse this by uh, home ownership by economic percentile and so forth, more concern about reliability in the bottom third of incomes, perhaps not surprising. Uh, one of the, the most surprising results of the survey was the uh, sensitivity to uh, price increases in affordability, and on average, uh, for energy to become affordable, consumers said that it would take a 175% increase in their home energy bills. So much more elasticity there than we expected. Uh, similarly, in, in gasoline prices, uh, there was a, uh, about a 75% increase before uh, gasoline would be regarded as unaffordable by the public. So those are summarized here, about 170% become unaffordable in, in home energy prices, about 85% in fuel prices. Uh, about three quarters of the respondents said that environment uh, was uh, affected by our energy use. Uh, you see at the bottom that they associate environmental effects more with effects on air, uh, climate in second, and things like water and human health uh, a little bit less. So again, in thinking about how to reach the public, uh, these are, are some of the, the concerns that they've expressed. And finally, uh, I wanted to, to point out uh, the energy conservation behavior reported by the public. About half said that uh, they reduced energy use for cost reasons, about uh, half for environmental reasons. And these questions were asked at different parts of the survey, so it's not an either-or proposition. Um, and we do see some sensitivities in both of these to things like uh, economic status and knowledge of energy. So at the, 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 we saw more efforts to conserve in the bottom third of incomes compared to the, to the top third. Uh, in the environmental case, more efforts to conserve based uh, by folks who had a greater understanding of uh, energy issues or claim to have than those who, who didn't. So I think those tell us sort of the, the, the base we have to work with 
in trying to, to win the, the hearts and minds of the public and policymakers, certainly as you would expect, uh, economics are part of the story, so is knowledge about energy, and getting information out there I think is a, a critical thing that organizations like this can do. Well, let me see if I can advance that. So let me just conclude by uh, acknowledging the, the survey authors from the Energy Institute and the Institute for Social Research. Uh, the report is available online at our Energy Institute website, and we've collected the data for the next quarter for January of 2014. We haven't analyzed uh, all of it yet, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, attitudes about price tolerance reliability uh, may have been different in the dead of this rather harsh winter compared to uh, the balmy days of last fall. So I like the, the survey of consumer attitudes that helps us to track uh, people's sense of their economic well-being. Uh, we think this will be a valuable tool going forward to understand uh, how sensitive the, the public's concerns are to the, uh, the weather and, and prices and other issues of the day. So with that, uh, thank you very much, and I'll be happy to answer questions. And